Hi, I'm Jan Witkowski of um, Colston Harbour Laboratory, and we're here on the 83rd Symposium, uh, Brain and Behaviour. And I'm delighted to have with me uh, Daniela Schiller from Mount Sinai, who's going to talk about something rather a little bit outside the sort of normal, hardcore, molecular neuroscience right. that, that we usually hear about. Right. And I've not heard your talk, Daniela, mm -hmm. so I don't feel any guilt in asking you to <laughs> tell me in advance what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what is the topic of your talk? Uh, the topic of my talk is um, navigating social space. Um, so uh, although this is a, a molecular, cellular um, conference, um, the work we do is in humans, on the human brain, and uh, probably more, um, I guess, sophisticated behavioral uh, mm -hmm protocols, um, but they are very uh, tightly linked to our knowledge of how the brain works. Uh, in particular, our uh, spatial navigation system, right? We have the hippocampus and uh, er the hippocampal network areas that are dedicated to navigating physical space. Um, similar areas are actually also implicated in episodic memory. Mm -hmm. And the link between these two fields is, is rather uh, uh, disparate, right? Uh, but one idea is that what these systems do is actually uh, a relational computation. They track relationship between uh, dimensions. And uh, we took this idea into social space, because social space is actually an excellent uh, and abstract space. It has continuous dimensions, uh, particularly of power and affiliation. Right. Let me pause you there. What do you mean by social space? So we, we have to if we want to describe a social space, we have to define the dimensions of social space first. And um, the main factors that drive social relationships are power and affiliation. You mean social relationships between people? Between people. Yeah, for, for example, you know, why are we here? Why don't we just sit at home and listen to lectures or read papers? Because we interact. Mm -hmm. And interactions are what drive and shape our social environment. Mm -hmm. So we can define it as a space where the people you interact with are uh, like locations in this abstract space and when you interact with them they move about and you have to track that. If you don't track mm -hmm. that it might explain um, you know, problems with social behaviors uh, that we see in many psychiatric disorders. And you're treating, you're treating this social space in a, in, a, in, a, in a sort of real physical way, not as an abstract thing. I, yeah. I, I can sort of think of, about spatial in relation to buildings and things mm -hmm. that there are the physical objects that mm -hmm. the brain has got relates and right um, and you're applying that sort of analysis to the social space of human interactions exactly exactly because uh, what we believe is that it is mm. the same computation mm. just applied to beyond physical space to physical space yeah, could be regarded as, as one case of such computation mm -hmm. but you can do it in many other spaces, not only, um, not only physical or social, but also there's evidence in uh, olfactory space, uh, sound space, mm -hmm. you know, other space, even just arbitrary space, as long as dimensions need to be tracked uh, and need to be navigated through. So what sort of, so you're obviously doing this using human subjects, what sort of experiments or observations do you do to explore this? this field? Uh, we try to do something uh, rather naturalistic. Uh, so if you were a participant, you would come to our lab, uh, we will slide you into the fMRI scanner. And what you will do is play an interaction game. It's uh, like a choose your own adventure game, you mm -hmm. know, that we all played. So people get the same narrative, but they need to make choices uh, on how to interact with the characters. So a character will come to you and speak to you. And for example, our, one of our characters, you know, she goes for a hug. And then you can decide if you hug her for a long moment uh, or just uh, give her a brief, uh, brief pat on the back. And there's a narrative. Um, in this case, the character is someone you knew in high school. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this way, you make decisions. And if you hug her for a long moment, that's an affiliation interaction. So you got closer. Uh, there's also a, a boss character, a person very powerful uh, in town. And that person can give you a job, but that person can be like, also very dominant. And again, you have a choice whether to be submissive. So if you are, then that character moved on the power axis. So what we do is take people's choices on how to interact and we plot them on a two-dimensional space mm -hmm. and measure polar coordinates. Uh, we can measure the orientation and length of a vector between your point of view and the character. Mm -hmm. So we basically translate 
your social behavior. What you see is just interact, play, you know, uh, talk to the characters, and we translate your behavior into movement on these two mm. dimensions. So we can actually extract coordinates, and then we, c we have values, right? Because each character in your own personal space uh, is in a particular location. So then we can ask, are these values are being tracked by the brain? And so when we scan participants' brain and get these coordinates, what we found is that for the vector angle, which uh, indicates the orientation of the vector with a particular character, um, that these values have been tracked by the hippocampus. So, do, so just coming back, back to the lady being hugged, <laughs> do, you, do you change the narrative along the lines that, well, the relationship between the, 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 hug, the hugger and the huggy yeah. um, is part of the narrative, whether they've known each other since school or they've just met at a party? Is that the sort of narrative that you change and look at, at how the relationship changes depending on that? Yeah, uh, yeah. basically the, the exact narrative is determined by your choice. So if you hug her, then the narrative continues with that long hug. But other participants would kind of push her back and, and they could persist doing that because there are additional like 12 interactions with that character mm. and 12, in, 12 interactions with five characters throughout the game. So we, what happens is that uh, you form a certain trajectory with each character. Yeah. So you can Im imagine it like a, a cube with... Uh, one dimension is power, one is affiliation, and how they kind of evolve over time. You really get a, a geometric structure, mm -hmm. and each participant ends up with that unique structure. And we can uh, identif identify all parameters in that, uh, in that structure. We can see how the brain is tracking these particular structures. So we do really translate it to something mm -hmm. that is similar to physical space, yes, yeah. Yeah. under the assumption that uh, a more fundamental computation is uh, the common denominator. And what sort of subjects have you used in these, these studies? Um, we have uh, one published study where we established that protocol and these uh, findings in healthy volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're moving on to clinical populations. In your healthy f volunteers, do you deliberately choose <laughs> deliberately choose a volunteer? Sorry, that, that's an oxymoron. Aim, aim. <laughs> do you aim for for subjects who themselves are different in their, in their nature. I mean, I tend to be a rather outgoing, very friendly sort of person. Yeah. Do you get people who are rather cold or bossy or, or see how? Yeah, you, how you, you definitely get all the range. Uh, we, we had some participants, for example, that were very hierarchical. So mm. you could see how in, at the end of the game, they really sort the, the characters based on mostly on, on hierarchy. And some people pushed everybody away and got close to just one person. Mm -hmm. uh, some had a, ver a very narrow space, meaning that they didn't go very far with any character. Mm -hmm. They just like went like a little bit back and forth. So you do see personalities uh, when you get that individual yeah. map. And um, that's one interesting aspect of the study that we really want to push it toward uh, precision research uh, that will be then related to very to personalized uh, treatment. Yeah. And you said, so that was, you published this study, sort of establishing the protocol with healthy volunteers. Have you now begun working with people with mental yep. problems, disorders? Yeah, for example, uh, borderline personality, avoidant personality, schizotypal personality. Uh, these are uh, patients that predominantly are characterized by problem you know, in interpersonal relationships. Uh, for example, uh, borderline patients could um, could have very intense relationships in mm. the sense that uh, they can go into very extreme. Uh, they can feel very close to you and after a while they can shift and think you're uh, something very negative. Mm. Uh, so unstable relationships. Avoidant personality would just generally avoid relationships. Um, so all of these are, are very strong characteristics. Uh, also in schizophrenia, usually you see social deficits even before people are, are uh, identified as schizophrenics. So uh, you really see it in many disorders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I lost track of what I was going to yeah. say. Well, I wanted to say something else. Uh, oh, please, actually, please do, please add, do. If I can. Um, I think w yeah. what is, is very interesting in this set of findings is that we were able to link it to the hippocampus. Mm. And the degree to which the hippocampus was tracking the social coordinates actually related to social anxiety uh, in uh, if we measure it with a uh, questionnaire, a self-report questionnaire. 
so that's again, uh, we also see hippocampal dysfunction in many psychiatric disorders. So when moving forward, we would like to connect the two, mm. hippocampal dysfunction and social dysfunction, and show how they're linked. And um, people interact with these characters. So, I mean, it's essentially like a video game, is it? The, the, phys the setup. Yes. And people do interact with these characters, including people with mental uh, disorders. They do interact with them as though they were real people. I mean, there's no, they become attached or distant. Or, uh, yeah. What I'm, I suppose I'm getting at is they're able to, that they don't regard these as, as a game. They become f emotionally immersed in the, in the interactions. Um, I believe so, uh, to some extent. This is why we, we went with a storyline, a narrative. You really get attached to characters, mm. you get into the story. So that's something that, that people easily connect with. Um, and uh, people did uh, have different opinions after the game, you know, they were uh, um, comparing notes, you know, about the characters and it's like this character, and <laughs> you know, they developed feelings toward them. So. One last brief topic. So do you, th do you think this sort of analysis could be used for preclinical um, diagnosis? I mean, I'm not quite sure how you'd find such people, but that you could detect signs of of schizophrenia in, in somebody before they were showing much in the way of overt features of the disorder? That, that would be very interesting. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the aims. Um, what we want to do is to um, use the game in a wide variety of people in the general population, so really hundreds and hundreds of people, mm. to see uh, what are the norms of how people generally behave. And then this will give us a, a tool to see uh, to try to identify abnormalities. And indeed, social deficits uh, have been identified even before uh, sch the schizophrenia, mm. the first episode, for example. Uh, but usually using um, clinical uh, yes. interview or um, self-report questionnaires right. and, and these types of... Uh, so this might be another tool that hopefully will be very informative. Well, I'm going to cut it short as much as I'd like to keep talking because you're giving your talk in 35 minutes time and you've got to get your, your slides up to the yes. AV. Daniela, thank you very much. Thank you very much.